Good morning, everyone. Glad to have you with us. Today is Friday, July 3, 2020. We are celebrating the Feast of St. Thomas the Apostle this morning, hence the red. And this Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Ralph Meacham. We begin our prayer as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Today on this Feast of St. Thomas, we begin by praising God in the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we may glory in the feast of the blessed Apostle Thomas, so that we may always be sustained by his intercession and, believing, may have life in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, whom Thomas acknowledged as the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the holy ones and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. His kindness for us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Gospel according to John. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and this time Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, 
and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Thomas, of course, is known as Doubting Thomas. As far as I know, no pope has ever taken his name. Uh, maybe someday, but uh, not yet. And uh, I think we maybe give Thomas uh, sometimes too hard a deal. Being myself from the great state of Missouri, the show me state, you know, I want to see the, uh, the results. So I think that uh, certainly in life, a certain amount of skepticism is very healthy. And uh, certainly you don't want to believe everything you're taught in school or everything companies say or every claim made about a product. Some skepticism, I think, is just an important thing. And even in faith, we have to not be gullible, but evidence and proof are very, very different than in the rest of life when we're talking about faith. We need to look in a more subtle way, also in the depths of our hearts, to come to recognize that generosity is more fulfilling than greed, that honesty really is the best policy, that Fidelity has its own reward, and that we get little glimpses and touches, uh, aspects of the reality and the power of Jesus in our lives that we need to pay attention to that are not often big and broad and overwhelming, but subtle and uh, distinct and quiet. Thomas is also called Didymus. Didymus is Greek for twin. Scripture scholars argue, who was he the twin of? Many people think that Thomas is called to be the twin because he's our twin. We're like, we're like Thomas, you know? And we struggle with faith, just as he did. And that that's uh, okay. We need to open ourselves up to the gift of the Holy Spirit to do that struggle of faith to open ourselves to come to believe not gullibly, not naively, not facilely but come to believe in a really strong, firm way not seeing Jesus corporeally but seeing Jesus in our hearts in the power of the Holy Spirit. Then we will truly be blessed. Let us pray. On this feast of St. Thomas the Apostle, let us pray for all the church, for the Holy Spirit to come upon us, increase our faith in the resurrection of Jesus, the power of his love for us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the Thomases we know, for God's blessings on them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For reasons I don't understand, Thomas is the patron saint of builders. So let us pray, first of all, for all those working in construction around here, especially in the heat now, for their safety, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as he is the patron saint of builders, let us pray for our own development project here and the interior renovation of our church with the sound system and lighting. For all those working on it and success of those projects, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Thomas is said to have gone to India and preached the gospel there. Let us pray for all the peoples of India, for blessing on them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today, four months from today, is the national election. Let us pray for our country, especially as we prepare to celebrate 4th of July tomorrow, for a, a time that's going to prove to be, I'm sure, contentious and difficult, 
that we may be agents of peace and respect for each other, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers and all those that remain silent in our hearts. We make them in the name of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you forever. Amen. All creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made, will become for us the bread of life. Amen. By the sacrament of water and wine, that we come to share in the divinity of Christ, to humble himself to share in our humanity. Bless to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. iniquities and cleanse me from my many sins. Please pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We render you, O Lord, the service that is yours, your due, humbly imploring you to keep safe your gifts in us as we honor the confession of the Apostle St. Thomas and offer you a sacrifice of praise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Joe our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her beloved spouse, the Saints Peter and Paul and Thomas, the Apostles, St. Augustine of Canterbury, St. Mary of Magdala, St. Phoebe, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the risen Lord be with all of you. Let us share with each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, hold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, that my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O oh God, as we truly receive in this sacrament the body of your only begotten Son, grant that we may recognize him with the Apostle Thomas by faith as our Lord and our God, and proclaim him by our deeds and by our life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.